Folks, hello. 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 Do you need your? Well, what is it? Is this Deerfield or what is the name of this town? Greenfield. Greenfield. Yeah. And Deer, Deerfield is somewhere around here as well? It is. Yep. Uh -oh. We're right on the edge of it. Like, okay, so I was yeah. that wrong. Yeah. No, I'm you're kind not of, wrong. I'm kind of doing it right. You don't have to know anything about You're not from here. You're just a guest of this this country, this true, town. True. Yeah. True. So you're forgiven. All of it. Mm -hmm. Want to sing us in? Oh. Uh, hopefully it's in tune. I don't know. It's what it is. Give me all your raw impressions, your thoughts, your words, your time. Carlos. <laughs> Carlos van Hilfte. Yeah, it has a sound in there that you're not I can't able even, to pronounce. My, my mouth can't make it. No, it's A. 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 A is, um, you can, the I sound is similar for I, J, and E, I. E, I, we have the similar sound for the combination of two letters. And the com it's the E, well, so I, J, and the E, I. So say your name. Van Heifte. Carlos Heifte. van Heifte. 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 Like we say Eindhoven, you say Eindhoven. Eindhoven. But it is Eindhoven. 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 So that's the Eindhoven. I sound. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you have strange things. We have strange things. Well, I have a strange accent because I'm from Minnesota. So, you know, you know, sometimes I hear people here talking and I kind of feel like this is not from here, but I cannot figure out where they're from. Yeah. Yeah, I'm one of those people. People here don't sound like me. And they can, they, they sort of understand immediately where you're from? They, or they're guessing? They, they usually think I'm from Canada. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. I've never been to Canada. Really? Correct. Oh my goodness. I've been very close with when with the flu. We um were in Buffalo and we took the we boat the... on the lake to see the falls. Yeah. And at some point the, the, the guy said, Oh, you're in Canada now. Oh. So in that way I've been to Canada. But it was <laughs> on the bay it, of the mist. It was really like minimal. Yeah. I need to go back. You Everybody says you have it's to go beautiful. there. Yes, it's I beautiful know. and it's like liberal and it's like you know it's it's uh, yes. it's a bit like Holland in a way. Is it? Oh, I think so. From what I, you've heard, from what I've heard, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I worked with Canadian people, not too many, but one of the groups I used to work with was the the tragic, tragically hip. The tragically hip. Yeah. Oh wow, you worked with them? Yeah. Oh, they were like they're like legends in Canada. They are. Yeah. Wow. And they, but over here they don't mean that much. And in Holland they were kind of hip too, like they were. Happy. Yeah. And they're um, they were totally nice people. Yeah. And, um, yeah. They're but very, it was a sad story in the end. A very charismatic oh. lead singer, and he yeah. he died. He passed away. He passed away. Yeah. And they made it like I think it was on Netflix, so they made a whole. Oh, they uh, did. Okay. Uh, a film about his oh. farewell tour. Oh. Wow. Gord. Yeah. Gord. Oh. Gord, I, I Gord Downey, yeah, so Gord Yeah, Down. Gord is a classic Canadian name. Okay. Gord. Yeah. Like mm. Gordon. Gord. Yeah, yeah. Gordon. Gordy. Yeah, if everyone's wondering, like, who's this gentleman we're speaking to, I'm sure you know, because it's Carlos. <laughs> He's the running and, gag. Uh, we <laughs> we had him on uh, this year, like maybe less than six months ago. Yes, easily. Um, easily less than six months ago. Yeah, just before um, summer. Yeah, yeah, just before summer when Lou was out on tour with Dino. Mm. Uh, Carlos came to one of the shows because it was not far from where you live, right? Correct. And you, he's from the Netherlands, uh, specifically Rotterdam. So... Was that festival in Rotterdam? No, um, no. You know, and I'm 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 from Zeeland. So you're okay. So you're not actually from Rotterdam. You no, live there. I lived but... there for about thirty years. And oh, okay. I love it, but it's oh. I was born and raised in Zeeland on a farm, yeah. and that is close to Belgium in the southwest corner of our country. Yeah. If you look at the map of Holland, there's a lot of little island style things in the southwest. Yeah, 
That's where I'm from. That's where I'm from. Yeah. If you're wondering, why is Carlos sitting in our house in Greenfield, Massachusetts, in the Raw Impressions studio? We're so happy to have you. <laughs> thank you. Um, we're honored. And thank you for being a repeat guest. Uh, he's here because he was actually in the States um, like a week ago, right? Last or weekend. Last week you came it's, in yeah. for Steve Albini's uh, memorial service, right? Memorial weekend. Memorial weekend. Yeah. yeah. And that was in Chicago on Lake Michigan. That was very near Chicago. And it's yeah. Waukegan or something like that. Okay. I have a hard time pronouncing that. Yeah. I think you did that That's really That's okay. Well. I'll say that Much sounded right, actually. Waukegan. Waukegan? No, yeah. Actually, yeah. The, the, someone told me that it is in a Tom Waits song. Oh, that's pro sure. It's fun to, it would be fun to sing that that, that word. Waukegan. Uh, yeah. Waukegan. 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 Yeah. yeah. Waukegan. It's a, that's, a real, that's like a Native, a Midwest Native American name, Waukegan. Did you share any memories of your time, or were you just kind of like a guest observing the other people, or did you get up and speak? No, I didn't get up and speak, but they, uh, it was a whole thing um, leading up to it as well, mainly on, on the web, like uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. They invited a bunch of, they invited everybody ex actually saying, if you have stories, trade them in. They had a web, uh, like a web link mm -hmm. on which you could you know you had a passport and you could trade in your story mm. and um on 22nd of july which is a week a week and a half ago mm. uh it was steve's birthday and mm. uh everybody was uh asked to post also stories but more memories like, me maybe memories but yeah. uh, also uh pictures mm. so that day and the days after that was f uh, the whole instagram thing was uh flooded with uh, Albini stories mm -hmm. and it had the hashtag thank you Steve Albini mm -hmm. you must have seen them I, did, I used to yeah. see some yeah 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 so I did my share and I mm -hmm. gave them a story and I you know but at that time I was one of many mm -hmm. and um, you know there was poker people there was um, music people there was um, comedy people and uh, it was a very nice gathering because we were all there for one thing. Mm -hmm. So it didn't have really a, a point of trying to feel important because everybody was important or not important. We were all like there f because we knew and loved uh, Albini. Uh, the location was amazing, mm -hmm. uh, right by the lake. Um, I don't know how you, like a pagoda kind of thing. Yeah, it, it was. was like, yep. And it was tiny, 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 but everybody was willing to deal with it and uh yeah um you know and you saw the breeders played and they were the stars the breeders yeah. the breeders were the, you know the ones i knew of and uh jeff tweedy and then jeff yep and his and, son um, spencer um fred armison Arm uh -huh, he was fred he was involved in a lot of things there was he yeah uh -huh. He does stand-up comedy, but he plays yep. any instrument in the universe. So <laughs> yes. any session thing, okay, yes. Fred is going to be part of that. What was what was the yeah. story that you shared about Steve? Like, what was what was the most sort of? Uh, I think um, what I traded in was the beginning. I was on Sonic Youth tour in '86, uh, and that was the same tour I met you, yeah. and we went to Chicago and. Uh, Sonic Youth was playing Club Metro, and um, Steve, you know, there, uh, it was middle of summer, there, so there was always gatherings on the street with cars and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and um, Steve was there, and he told Sonic Youth he wasn't allowed to get in because he had some press thing in which he sort of, you know, that said, said bad things about um, Club Metro. Oh. And so we sneaked him in so he through was, the back he door. Oh, he, had so. been, he had been shit talking the metro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which you I know, mean, Steve was really known for shit. Like he, he could he, do that very, very yeah. concise, very intelligent shit talking. He yeah. was like really good at it. Uh -uh. But so, so yeah, you can find wonderful stuff of his on the web talking <laughs> about issues. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. But then, you know, he found out I was from Europe and he found out that I was booking shows and uh, I gave him his phone number and then he went home and came back with the whole big black catalog. So he gave that to me, which is still, you know, it's still in my, my 
files. Mm -hmm. And um, three months later, he was playing Holland. And uh, probably it's not a couple of shows uh, in Germany or in, in, uh, in Belgium. That was my range at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, that was, um, it was, I had never seen Big Black. And then I remember very clearly walking into the venue and then they started and it was like, whoa, what is yeah. this? Yeah. It was so different from anything else. It was. Hmm. And it was very powerful. It was very mean, but it was yeah. awesome. They were, they were really great. Hmm. They were like as a live band, they were, I mean, they had a drum machine that they were playing yeah. to, yeah. which was unusual. Suicide had a... Well, I mean, there were, there were bands that did it, yeah. but I think within the indies, I don't know, it was, it was just more of a, an approach that was like more, in, there was a lot of industrial bands doing yeah. it, you know, certainly, but they kind of seemed to add almost like an industrial edge to, to this uh, punk kind of, it was yeah. like this industrial, what, how, uh, industrial punk, you know, it was just very... Mm. I don't know. It was this. It was like visceral. The highs were highs, the lows were low, and then yeah. the, their drum machine just propelled it along. And he was just such a, you know, like his just the way he looked with his guitar wrapped around. He was very very slight. Yeah, he his was guitar wrapped wrapped around his waist. Yeah, and I really loved the records at that point too because yeah. the records sounded really were a great representation of how they. So when you saw them live, it was like the records being brought to this. Correct. Yeah. You know, so it was very similar. So, yeah, there wasn't, and the records were as good as they were live in a way, yeah. which was also unusual for that time period, I think. And, so. you know, they had this amazing work ethic, you know, mm. they wanted to work, they wanted to, there was no bullshit, and it was like, and I kept being friends with Steve, so I booked shows for him. I think uh, 86 was a, just them and introduction to Europe and the next year he decided to break up Big Black and so he did a world tour breaking up Big Black <laughs> and every continent like two or three shows and um, wow yeah and then um, then came Rape Man and I booked one tour for Rape Man which wasn't that much fun because it was the, the name and it was like mm -hmm. kind of complex but I had worked with Scratch Acid before so two of the guys of Rape Man were in scratch acid before that so they were also kind of friends so i yeah. feel i felt and they felt comfortable with me but i felt very comfortable with them mm -hmm. and then uh, that would have been the same tour that dinosaur opened for them could be i don't yeah, know you know played. it's like i have old agendas and sometimes i go back to the old agendas and i feel like there's some information in there but there's a lot of information we not played, in there we played through england and there were bomb threats yeah <laughs> and then, um, yeah, we played in uh, Yugoslavia, the former Yugoslavia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> crazy? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You and, know, and it was all shoestring tours because it was, you know, a thousand dollars would be a, a, a really great fee. Mm. Yeah. And that was, um, but the vans were cheap, and I always had friends who wanted to be tour manager. Yeah, Holland, I, Holland is, was like the epicenter yeah. for tour managers and people that would were willing to drive and they were yeah. also multilingual. Mm. That's that mm. helps. Mm. Yeah. That helps. That, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and they had their black leather jackets and their cowboy boots and Cuz like I said, you know, we don't speak more than one language. <laughs> they were they were <laughs> like just I told you really personal, you know, like the Dutch tour managers were the best and they yeah. they mm. generally worked at the clubs and And some of them are still there. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 They, they made a career out of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, um, uh, Theo van Einbergen, you know his name Theo uh, Theo, yeah. Theo van Rock, they called him, but he was uh, this uh, Roland's band publicity photos when he's just the fifth, fifth member. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I met him a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, and he came up to me, Yeah, you're the guy who started it all. Okay, oh, I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> you did, you did kind of start Carlos, it all. Carlos, yeah. you're a legend. You, did, you made connections for this, <laughs> yeah. for our little generation of bands. I mean, we were a little bit younger. Than Big Black and Sonic Youth mm -hmm. and, the, and Swans, but uh, but yeah, you, it's amazing. You were just talking about the first show that you booked was Bauhaus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I can't even like, and it was in a small club. And it, it was, was just, like a bar. It was like next to nothing. It was like, uh, and I remember, I was. I was not a promoter, my friend was, I was kind of a promoter, we did it together, together with a friend, mm -hmm. and he had a venue but couldn't do it because 
his venue wasn't available on that particular day so we went to that bar and i worked in the record store and the record store we didn't have computer systems to keep track of what we sold and we didn't so, uh, sell mm -hmm. so for every record we had a little card and then uh, on which we wrote the title the record company and all that stuff so when we sold the record we took out the card and so we knew what was out of stock or what was mm -hmm. gone right so i had a stack of this little cards and then i had uh, uh I think we could only sell a hundred tickets, so I did handmade a hundred of these tickets, mm -hmm. like numbered them, and okay. then I had made a stamp. Um, uh, wow! Bauhaus ad this is this day and this is this venue. And wow! Then That's so crafty 001, of you. Oh two, oh oh three. Wow! You numbered Look at all the you. tickets. Yeah. Oh. You were scrapbooking. I might have one of them. <laughs> if, we, you know, if, if, if you give me ten minutes, it's That's probably so in my cloud somewhere. Sure. Where, where was? I mean. When was this? What? 1980. 1980? Yeah. Wow. How old yeah. were you? 26. This means that I'm now yep. a lot older. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Older and wiser. Oh my gosh. Well, speaking of that, we're getting close to Carlos's birthday. Do you want to tell, tell <laughs> us like, about that? His birthday. I was going to say. He's dreading his birthday. Can you. Uh, <laughs> I know. No, people can figure out now. 1980, <laughs> yeah. 26. He's Don't turning get... 50. So <laughs> <laughs> as a soon-to-be 50-year-old, I want to know, what advice would you tell your younger self? Like, is there something that you would say, don't do this so much of, or like, do more of this? Y your question was, uh, what advice would I give myself? Your younger self. You know, um, I, I did pretty well. I, I kind of don't feel like... Um, so you wouldn't do anything differently? You're like, it's You know, good. if I would have... Uh, probably if I would have been more business-like, I would have been more successful in a way that I might now still run a company with hmm. 50 people working for me. But I'm not like that. So I'm totally happy with where I ended up. It's, uh, I, you know, I've... Uh, I'm, uh, in the end, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? I well, think I mean, actually, I was going to say you did answer it because then it's like you're saying you basically it means like live, like, I guess, live your best life each day, right? Like live, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, because you don't want to look back and go like, I wish I would have done that differently. Like, Correct. Well, see, I mean, that what I, what I, what I think of is knowing you back then mm -hmm. and knowing like when we came to Holland and I think this is the way that you probably treated everybody mm -hmm. is you made us feel extremely secure. Mm -hmm. You know, like we felt, we actually felt, I would say safe. And we were like people entering, we were kids walking into yeah. situations we had never <laughs> walked into. Uh -uh. And I think that there was, there was this sense of like you taking care of it. And you were a very, like you, you had a very, your presence was very calming. Uh-uh. Okay. And I, I mean, the fact that you would carry this up, that you would have that same presence with Michael Giraffe from the Swans, <laughs> or that you brought, like, the scary, I mean, at, at, you know, 1980 Bauhaus, where yeah. I think, the, like, what's really fascinating to me is, like, you have a very, I don't want to say sunny disposition, but you are, you are very, like, you were presenting some of the darkest music <laughs> that existed at that time. And, and this, these, this was... You know, it changed our little subculture so much. That music, Bauhaus, yeah. Swans, true, true. Sonic Youth. These are these were bands that were really, and I think people really tend to invest a lot of like expectations about those bands and vibes. And to know that you, like, when I knew that you were behind these things and you were a common denominator, it made it just feel like more safe and more like, like we knew, you know, it's like. Because if you were a bad promoter and they, they or yeah, if you, oh were, yeah. you would not feel like you could feel like, oh, this is sketchy. Mm -hmm. This is weird. Like, mm -hmm. but there was never those situations. And for us, like we were opening for a band called Rape Man. I mean, that was for like, it, it, it could have gotten as sketchy as it could have. And we did. We had bomb yeah. threats and things. Yeah. But I think, uh, you know, just the combination, like the, the, the chemistry between you and Steve, the mm. chemistry between you and Sonic Youth, the chemistry between you and Jay, like you were mm. able to like speak to people about like all these different personalities yeah. and balance them out and have them play and tour effectively. 
you know, these were not crash and burn situations. Like these bands, mm. we all kind of like, or were there, were there, were there, what were your crash and burns? Like, what did you, did you have any like really? Um, as long as I stuck with, um, your, uh, your league, my league. Yeah. But I, I remember at some point I uh, moved over to a, a big company and I uh, started doing shows just Holland as a promoter. And <clears throat> I remember that at some point um, there were two things like um, metal, like real metal music. Yeah. And I, I remember walking in dressing rooms like of a metal band and I felt immediately this is not my this is not me I'm in the mm. wrong place mm. and they, they yeah and same for a, uh, at some point the dance electronic music mm. felt like this is not me mm, and right. so I always found someone who was better than me on this and I moved that person into right. that you direction. match up someone who's yeah. better matched like for that and and still I, I know I have a good sense of what I like and who I like and what I, where I feel comfortable. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, uh, like three weeks ago, I went to a Cat Power show and I brought Monique, my wife. <laughs> Your partner. <laughs> and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And Monique has seen me in the band situation quite often, but my daughter hardly ever, you know, she's, she's you know... My my music life is a little bit before she was really actually yeah. aware of what I was doing, and um, then when we rode back home, she said, "You know, Daddy, that was like you felt at home between those people. Aww. You know, that's like hmm. that's my world." And then I have my stories I listen to, and then we have there's so many things in common, even with people in Cat Bar's band. There was definitely people I'd never met before, but they're they're the the artist vibe, the 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 mm. musical vibe, the 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 curiosity of things and uh, they noticed that I was like oh yeah you know don't put me in a in a in a dressing room for a football team mm. I will be like horrible so did did your tastes always dictate who you were what music you were attracted to or my taste um, I guess it has to do with it, but it's also like the friendships, you know. Right. Sonic Youth was important, and they sort of somehow connected me to a good bunch of people. But um, besides that, you know, Scratch Acid, for instance, was had nothing to do with Sonic Youth. I just got a tel telephone number from someone, and I called them up, and because you liked the band. Yeah. Okay, so you were like, you were like, I would, so like. That kind of music really appealed to you? When yeah. You were like, okay. Yeah. Working for a band, working for an artist, you have to be a fan somehow for mm. a short period of time. And the yeah. day after the show, it's fine if you think this was a mistake of this is not working for me. But leading up to it, you know, th there was people uh, um, in the business who said, you love those guys too much. You sort of, you're, oh. you're, you're, mm. you're too emotional about all that. Oh. Which I thought at that you know was a little bit of critique, but it was also for me it was like a compliment as well. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it made like yeah. some people can book a band and then uh, turn the page within ten seconds. I never did that. I was yeah. mm. the page was my you know mm. was my my apartment. It was my you know mm -hmm. it was I cared a little too much sometimes, and that made me probably as a businessman less good or less appropriate or less whatever. Mm. Uh, but as a, a friend and as a, someone who's got things, because mm. you know, I had all of Europe. I, I had uh, like-minded people. I yeah. kind of felt very quickly if someone is from the same kind of wood as we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I remember, I still have friends because of it. There's still people yeah. who are sort of. Because the Albini thing was big time on the internet, and then there's a, this guy from from Sweden or from Denmark. Yeah, hey Carlos, I remember that show, and then the guy from um, uh, Switzerland. Yeah, I knew you were close to Steve. Blah 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 blah. So that that's you know people I don't speak to every year, but then the little community comes back together, sort of. Right. Yeah, I think that's what you're talking about. Is like it's 
it's more than just a job. It's a community, you know, yeah. and that's so, yeah, you'd say that's not a regret then you have. It's like that's that was a choice that you made to like kind of build a community yeah. around you. And I love that. I mean, because I feel like. I guess I kind of feel like life is so short and I love the idea of being surrounded by people that um, I'm interested in and I feel comfortable with mm. them and I'm, I also admire them. Mm. You know, like you said, you being a fan ca- kind of helps, you know, of the music too. Yeah. And I think that I've seen that a lot with you too. Like when you have a tour manager that like likes Dinosaur, I just feel like it's always better. You yeah. know what I mean? Other than not that there's, yeah, I'm just saying that you can really tell when someone like well, we were, really I mean, enjoys what they're doing. Well, Dinosaur, you know, I mean, we, we uh, when I rejoined the band, mm-hmm. um, you know, Jay had, um, you know, managers, yeah. and they were very. I think the managers were frustrated with how the band really insisted on choosing people that we knew. Yeah. Which meant that we weren't working with like the professional roadies. We weren't working. We were working everything. Friends, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And this is very much the way Jay works. Which was when I re-entered Dinosaur Junior, it was like a, a comforting part of it. Yeah, was that actually everything was built upon, uh, still built upon these these long term relationships mm. with people and friendships. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, I like, I, like, I, like, I I kind of take this story a little further regarding Sonic Youth. Yeah, mm-hmm. because. Early nineties, Sonic Youth. I was late um, Daydream Nation. I was their agent for that album. We went together to Australia for that album, um, and then shortly after that, uh, the whole thing started to happen. You know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about. You know the major labels, and then the managers stepped in, and then they got uh, because they felt like you know maybe we can make some extra money uh, in this, so they get. Uh, Living Color, uh, their managers became Sonic Youth managers. Living Color. Mm. And they, at, you know, very early on, that guy said, who is this guy in Europe? What yeah. is he, what is his thing? And um, I was out. I, they kicked me out. And mm. um, uh, I, I don't want to blame anyone, but it was kind of ugly. And then they got someone in England because London, you know, that's the business. That's the mm-hmm. real people. That's the, the power. The power. They were looking for power. Mm-hmm. And then um, it, it's kind of a tragedy, but uh, three years, four years later, I'm, I'm not sure what the album it was. Maybe Washing Machine. I don't know exactly. The, the, but then um, the agent, the powerful agent, wasn't so powerful because he died. Right. <laughs> He's dead. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. I'm sorry. And and I I knew him and he was a really sweet guy. So I'm I'm I'm. It sounds maybe a little cynical, but he, he was really a sweet guy. And then, uh, but then, they got me back. They said, yeah. you know, maybe it's better to have a friend doing all this. And yeah. I was still a friend. Mm-hmm. So um, I got a job again. Same kind of same like what you went through. Yeah. Maybe. And uh, so we were friends again, and we, and, uh, you know, for another 20 years, I booked the shows again. Oh. Wow. I didn't realize there was that four year period. Or... Yeah. Wow. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> A brief breakup in yeah, the long term you know, history. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, uh, Albini never did this. Albini was major loyally. Loyal. Really? Yeah. You know, yeah. Dinosaur, I broke up with Dinosaur as well at some mm. point. That was mm-hmm. also like, uh, I, th- I remember one manager who's, I met him and he was really sweet. He was very, but at some point, you know, I'm not that big, powerful agent that yep. some of them want. And mm. uh, and I didn't want to be that. So, um, mm-hmm. but I had next to that, I had my uh, company who promoted shows in Holland, which was also very successful and where there was a lot of money being made. So the money side you know, what's okay with me. It all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> that's another yeah, way of you're retired. You're well, I retired. think that's why I was asking that question about you thinking back on your younger self is because you said you're, you're turning 50, yeah. you know, and um, that you were kind of, you seem like you don't really like it or you're not looking forward to this. And I thought, I wonder why. Now, yeah. You know, um, is that too? Heavy. Is that too? Hurt? No, is that too personal? No, you know, is that too heavy? I... No, it's not heavy at all. It's just like um, I'm. I'm totally. I'm. I'm physically very 
it's all working out well. And, you know, I have two beautiful daughters and a beautiful wife mm -hmm. for the last same girlfriend since 1980. 80? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and she, she, um, she, she let me s uh, stay over with her, and the next morning the radio started with, in New York City, uh, Dakota Building, John Lennon, oh. and so I was, hey, did you hear this? Oh, so he was assassinated the day after your first date. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh. okay. So that's how we sort of. And actually, wow. uh, you making circus kind of really wild. Wrote, okay, yeah. Like when I came to see fifty birthday of Jay, it was early December. Yeah, you have to correct me on the on the uh, year. Uh, it was two thousand sixteen because I was pregnant with Izzy. That was and his fiftieth birthday. Was, yeah. um, it was December two two thousand and yes. 15, I guess. Oh, you're right. 15. Sorry. 15. Then, yeah, because um, I was pregnant. Izzy was born in 2016. We 2015. Were, uh, Monique and I were in New York, and uh, December 8th, that's the day. <gasps> it was the day we were then. together for okay. 35 years. Oh. And so we went to Central Park, and oh. uh, in the front of oh, wow. Dakota building, there's uh -huh. this uh, like thing. memorial kind of uh -huh. and there was like a couple of hundred people singing John Lennon's show, uh, songs and it was a beautiful day that whole weekend oh, oh, that yeah. whole weekend was I know. beautiful yeah. Yeah. that was for the anniversary of the first dinosaur album yeah. that's when they did the 10 shows yeah. uh, was that at the Bowery or? no Bowery no. Ballroom was it yeah, the Bowery I thought it was the Bowery right yeah Yeah. and uh, Kim was there she sang with them for one show I don't know if you got to see did you get to see I, any of the I did, shows I, went, I, I saw one of the shows you saw one of the shows okay and I met you know uh, so, so quite a few people from back in the days yeah and then they all came to the birthday party and that yes. was yes uh, mm -hmm. that's the I that birthday party well yeah that birthday party was pretty fun you were there yes Okay. I was there. Yeah, I was pregnant. So I don't know. I was I wasn't like drinking or party. Obviously, I was pregnant. But like, I had a great time because I met uh, a really cute celebrity <laughs> who talked to me. Norman yeah, Reedus. He kind of flirted with her. Lou thinks he flirted with me. He did. He but, said he liked you know, the way you smelled. He did. He did. Norman Reedus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah. uh, it was fun. Daryl, he's like a fan of dead. dinosaur and Jay, I know there's but, more you know. fans of dinosaur. There's a lot of fans. Of yeah, dinosaur. yeah. You and Mon it's Monique, right? Yeah. You've been married then now. Would it be forty five years together. or together? Sorry, forty five years we, um, this uh, December. This, no, this forty four this year. Forty four. Wow. Wait. So are you guys gonna do a blowout party for your fiftieth? Let us know. <laughs> I'll, I'll look for that invitation. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did a. a Do, big, then, then, big, then you can sell the farm, you know. So yeah. have a big party. And then burn it. Burn and it. then burn the <laughs> fucking <laughs> barn. It just you know, like uh, just put it up. <gasps> yeah. Oh. There's uh, a lot of things to celebrate. We need to celebrate life. Yeah. That's why I'm here. I know. I know that's, that's what, what I'm doing. saying. This is like your little like a celebration. Yeah, you it's, celebrated it's, Steve, but then you're popping in on us. Yeah, and, I you know. know. I, I, that you feels know, special. I haven't been to Massachusetts for a long time, and then I saw you guys a couple of months ago, and I felt like I want to. Why not? And not, in my nor in my normal, my usual uh, thing would be I go to New York, one stop in New York. I see Lee, and I see a mm. bunch of Steve, and a, a couple of people of my friends living there. But I thought, well, let's make it Boston. Let's make it <laughs> yeah, Massachusetts. Go to and, Massachusetts. Yeah. And wonderful Luke came to the to pick me up at Boston Airport, brought mm -hmm. me to Jay's house, and mm -hmm. Jay is taking care of me very, very, very nicely. Yeah. And tomorrow, John Maloney is going to be bring me back to the. Oh well, we're so glad you popped up here to Greenfield yeah. to visit us for the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to be here and see all this. Yeah. I know. Live in the Raw studio. <laughs> Live in the Raw studio. I know. Yeah. The Barlow home. Well, I think we have to wrap it up. Um, I didn't I didn't get to meet Izzy. She's. Uh, I'm going to go get her from camp. So if you're still here, or you could come with me to pick her up from camp, but you don't have to. Yeah, but I probably will, I probably will go to, uh, back to Jay's. Got to go back to Jay's. Mm -hmm. Okay. When she gets, she gets out. She gets out at 3.30, so in a half an hour. Give me all your raw impressions, your thoughts, your words, your time. 
Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Thank you, Lou and Alao. I loved it. <laughs> Daryl from The Walking Dead.